The MySQL Workbench is a graphical program for Windows that allows you to connect to MySQL databases. It makes working on the databases a lot easier because it has all the tools included to be able to build databases, tables, triggers, procedures, and other parts of the database, and also administrate the database itself. For example, you can add users, manage their rights. You can also run queries and do other things. To get started, you'll need to download some files. If you Google MySQL Workbench, it'll bring you out to the MySQL site. And you want to download the files. Click on the download button, but before you scroll all the way down to download the files, be sure to notice that there are two prerequisites. One is the Microsoft.NET framework, and the other is a Visual C++ file. If you click on the .NET Framework file, it'll take you out to Microsoft site to download it. And then go ahead and click download. And then save the file. Depending on your browser settings, it's probably going to save it to your downloads directory, but pay attention to where it downloads. Once you get that downloaded, go ahead and download the Visual C++. You may or may not need these files. It just depends on what other software you already have installed on your Windows system. There's a lot of programs that need these files, and it is possible you may already have them. But go ahead and download them anyway, just in case. When you click on to download the Visual C++, it's going to give you some choices. Now, if you have Windows 10, chances are very high that you have a 64-bit system. So for Windows 10, pick the center option. It's going to be rare that you would pick the ARM option. This is for ARM processors. Intel processors, x86s, and x64s are the last two choices. But it, again, with Windows 10, it's very unlikely you would choose x86 because this is for 32-bit machines. And if you have an older machine that is 32-bit, you would choose the x86 option. Hit Next and then download the file and save it, again, probably to your downloads directory. Once you get those two files downloaded, you can download the MySQL Workbench. Grab the latest version. Scroll down until you see the version that's right for your system. If you have Windows 10, you're going to want the 64-bit. If you have an older version of Windows that happens to be 32-bit, then you can download the 32-bit installer. The MSI installer is the Windows installation type of installation where you just click on the program to install the file automatically for you. This is the best choice for most people. You'll click on download and it'll want you to log in and sign up. But if you notice down here at the bottom, you can say no thanks, just start my download. And again, save the file. Pay attention to where you save this file, you're going to need it. So when you get done doing your downloads, go to the directory where you downloaded all your files. For me, that was my downloads directory. So I have the two Visual Studios files, and then I also have the MySQL Workbench. First, go ahead and try to install the Visual Studio files in case you need them. If you've already installed it, then you're going to get this screen where it says repair or uninstall. If you already have it installed, you don't need to do anything. If you need to install it, click next through the installation procedures. It's going to take a few minutes, so give it time. When you're finished installing the Visual C++, go ahead and install the .NET. This needs administrative privileges, so you're going to get a UAC pop-up. You'll need to hit yes. It'll unzip the installation, and it'll tell you if you need the .NET Framework version 4 or not. Again, if you've already installed other programs that use the .NET Framework, you probably already have this installed, but it doesn't come with Windows 10 by default, so it just depends on what software you've downloaded. If you need it, click Continue and go ahead and install this. It will take several minutes, 
and it'll show you a progress bar as it continues through the installation process. So making sure you have these two prerequisites is going to help quite a bit. Once you get the prerequisites installed, you can double click on the MSI file that we downloaded for MySQL Workbench. If it pops up a warning, go ahead and hit run. And what you're going to do once the installer begins is hit next at the beginning and they're going to choose the directory to which you're going to install the program. The default directory is probably fine for most. And then you can choose complete or custom. It's safe to choose complete because it's going to install all the files you need. But if you want to trim the installation down a little bit, you can choose custom. If you choose custom and it turns out that some of the files you needed aren't installed, just come back and rerun the installation process and add those files. Click Next and Install. And this program is going to need administrative privileges because it's going to put files in the program files directory. So you'll need to hit Yes to give it administrative privileges. This installation process is going to take several minutes. Once it gets done, you'll see this screen and you can launch the MySQL by leaving the checkbox checked here. When you come back to your computer, you may not know how to start MySQL after the initial installation. But if you click on the Windows icon, you'll notice recently installed programs will appear over here on the right. If you still can't find it, just click on the Windows and then type MySQL and look for MySQL Workbench. You can right click on the shortcut and say pin to the taskbar to put the shortcut down inside your taskbar. If you're overriding a previous installation like I did here where I've upgraded to a new version, you may see that the shortcut doesn't have the correct symbol. Don't worry, just right click, close the program, right click again, and say unpin from taskbar. This will get rid of the old shortcut that was associated with the old version of MySQL Workbench. Come back over and type MySQL Workbench again and repin it to the taskbar. If you've never installed MySQL Workbench, you won't have to worry about this step. You'll just say pin to taskbar and the dolphin symbol will appear. You can also right click and pin to the start menu. That keeps it installed over here in the start menu when you click on the windows. In my case, it's over here on the right. Once you've finished with the installation, you can go ahead and run the program just to make sure it's installed correctly. You'll see the MySQL connections. If you haven't created a connection yet, you're going to need some pieces of information from your database that you've created. So you're going to need to know the port that it's running on. The default is 3306, so if you didn't change it, it's okay to leave the port the way it is. You also need to remember the password that you used, and you can give your connections a name. In this case, the MySQL database is running on my computer, localhost. So the host name is just localhost 127001. But if you've installed the MySQL server on another computer, you'll need to know either the DNS name, the host name, or the IP address of that computer. When you're ready, hit Test Connection. And you'll need to supply the password that you used when you set up the MySQL database. If you want to save the password, you can click Save Password in Vault. And it'll tell you whether or not you were connected successfully. If you weren't connected successfully, again, recheck all the settings. Make sure you know the IP address of where the MySQL database is installed and that it is indeed using the, the default port. If it's not, simply change the port to the one that the administrator tells you. Make sure you have the correct username and the correct password to log into the MySQL server.